So Nayyar Ali Dada, we know um, for his most amazing architecture um, all around Pakistan. Um, his beautiful buildings include um, Alhamra Arts Council, Kazafi Stadium, um, Alhamra Open Air Theatres. Um, Nayyar Saab received the Al Khan um, Architecture Award in 1998. He also has received Pride of Performance. Um, so beside all these celebrated um, architectural spaces, very few people know about his association with Shakir Ali um, and also the fact that he was the architect for Shakir Ali's residence, which is now the um, Shakir Ali Museum. So we welcome Nayyar Saab to our panel. Um, next to Nayyar Saab is Salima Hashmi. Um, I don't know where to start, but I'll just say, say a few words. Actor, activist, art educator, painter, writer, um, educationist. So, you know, we all have studied under her and it's a privilege to sit down with her. And she was also um, a co-curator for this exhibition that we are holding the panel for the Lahore Art Circle. Um, Mrs. Hashmi just recently received an honorary PhD degree from the University of Bath Spa, England for her services to art and art education. Um, next to Mrs. Hashmi is uh, Simone Billy. She's an um, Austrian-based art historian and researcher, and she has researched um, in all over the world, um, and her area um, of uh, concentration is um, South Asia and West Asia. And her most recent publication is the um, Modern Art in Pakistan, History, Tradition, and Place. The book has been relaunched at Lahore Art Fe uh, Literary Festival. Simone is currently teaching at the University of Innsbruck, Vienna. Um, so I welcome all of my panel, panel members, and I'm really hoping that this would be an enlightening discussion for everyone. So just to give you guys a little bit of an introduction of what Lahore Art Circle was, and also to let you know that you know this little exhibition that Mrs. Hashmi and myself curated uh, was part of FAS International Festival, um, happened in November. Um, and this is a follow-up catalog which will be available after our talk um, outside our um, auditorium. And um, so there are essays in it and there are works in it. The exhibition was only held for like two days um, and only the reason was that we really borrowed the work from private collection. It was highly risky to just like, you know, put up all this show without having any insurance and stuff. But, you know, we, we just wanted to go back to the past. So, just a little introduction of Lahore Art Circle was um, formulated in 1952 um, and the group dism uh, uh, dismembered by like 1958 but um, we found very interesting discoveries during this time like you know what they were doing as these modernist artists came together. So the member of the Lahore Art Circle, so I think we are running a PowerPoint behind us and you will just continuously see. So there were eight founding members, so Shakir Ali was the leader of the group. And um, for a very long time, it was not clear if Shakir Ali was literally formally part of the art group because he's always been taken as the you know, most influential modernist artist. Um, but we found meeting minutes um, where he's clearly been the leader of the group. Then we had Ahmed Parvez, Muin Najmi, uh, Sheikh Safdar Ali, Razia Firoz, Maryam Shah, and um, uh, am I leaving? Anyone? I think Shamza. Shamza, Anwar Jalal Shamza, the most celebrated one among all of them. Um, so I would like to first post a question to Nayar Saab regarding um, his close relationship to Shakir Ali. Would like to know how you looked at him as a modernist person. Yes. Uh, I had the good luck of being uh, his student and then uh, also had the experience of being a junior colleague and then uh, I, he was senior to me but we became very close and very, very friendly. There are three aspects of Shakir's uh, person. One is that of a, an artist, the other is that of a, a teacher and the third one is as, as a private person. So as a as an artist, uh, Shakir uh, has a diverse travelogue starting uh, from his birth from uh, Rampur, India. From there he went to Bombay and joined uh, uh, School of Arts, JJ School of Art, which was uh, founded parallel to Bio School of Arts. 
Then from there onwards, he went abroad for studies. He went to Slade, England. He also passed through France and Czechoslovakia. So he came uh, with a media uh, sort of an experience, an imprint of uh, the European development of arts, fine arts. And with all that, he came back to Lahore. And uh, the special thing about him was that he had a tremendous understanding of the European uh, academic uh, uh, arts, uh, fine arts. Uh, but, uh, uh, and he was impressed by so many artists. What is singular about him is that his work does not show specifically any old master's imprint. Unlike uh, Amrata Shergulu, who was uh, uh, his uh, contemporary and was an artist of great merit. But you can immediately identify the marked image of Gauguin on her work. Shakir was not like that. Shakir's work somehow uh, became a pluralist expression of, of, of modern painting. And when he came here, uh, uh, he, he then got himself ingrained in the, back into the local traditions of the place. And his art became hybrid between the local culture and local grounding and the imprint of the training and the influences which he brought from Europe. So out, out of all this came a style of painting which was its own type. It was modern, it was uh, minimalist, and it was based on inspiration from symbolic expressions which were uh, intelligent paintings which were not only decorative or good to look at, they carried through its symbolism, it carried a lot of message. And I found that he was above all these three positions, a humanist and an activist. An activist. And the example of that is that during the war, Intadar Hussain went to him and he said, Shakir, people are hiding in, in the trenches and the war is on and you're painting moon and stars. What is wrong with you? Do you have anything to do with this? He says, look here, this, this is nonsense. This wall, this moon shines across the border as well. It shines in Delhi. It shines in Lahore. It, uh, you said the war is something that I'm, I'm, I'm not interested in. And I'll continue with my message, which is of unity and humanism, which is beyond geography and beyond times. So that was his message, I think, which he gave through the paintings. Thank you. Ms. Hashmi, <coughs> my the next question is for you. Um, during the curation of the show, we had lots of discussion between how closely Lahore literary circle was with Lahore art circle. Can you please shed some light on that, like, you know, this intellectual connection between these artists and these writers and, you know, being like, you know, grown up, growing up in that environment where you were like very much part of it, maybe not so much in your like young years, but like, you know, experiencing all of these years. Can you talk about that? I think it's very good that it's a literature festival in which we're talking about art. Um, and I think in a certain way, when I think back and we look at the, the title of this um, catalog, this book, uh, which we brought out as a result of that very brief exhibition, at the Fairs Festival, Neador, New Age. I think that was a Neador for art as well as for literature. I mean, you had uh, the progressive writers, you also had the Halqa Erbabe Zok, you had people like Nasir Kazmi and Intazar Hussain, uh, Manto, these were the people who were challenging norms, uh, challenging accepted ways. Um, of writing, and on the other hand, you had this parallel, which was Lahore Art Circle, it became the Lahore Art Circle, which is a group of um, artists who were questioning everything. They were not willing to go along with the kind of aesthetics or subject matter 
which was prevalent, which was a kind of sentimental allegiance to tradition, uh, which in its turn was a rebellion against um, the Europeans here, which is against uh, the British colonial oil on canvas tradition. Uh, so you had these two streams. Inevitably, they were connections. They were connections because some of the artists were writers also. Um, Shamza is a good example. Um, who was short, writing short stories, he was in the School of Arts, came from a family of people who originally were made carpets. So there was, you know, the, but there was also at another level, there was an intellectual connection between people like Fez Ahmed Fez and Shakir Ali and Ali Imam, who had a vision of a new society, a neador, a new age. And therefore, it was inevitable that the discussions ran parallel, but also they were, there was interaction because they felt that writers and artists could be comrades in arms, that they could question some of the norms which were already there or were being pushed into prominence as a result of 47 and post 47. We have to understand that this, Pakistan had come about after a very turbulent truncation of the subcontinent. And there was a lot of torp hold, there was a lot of unch niche. Um, Pakistan was being sort of lured into the Cold War, uh, the bloc, the American bloc. And yet there was, you know, a strong emergence of a trade union movement. So yes, there were these connections and one saw them and then there were people who were becoming, becoming the sort of ideologues for both the art, for the visual arts, as well as for the writers. Um, people like Fez were uh, connections. Safdar Mir, uh, who became known as Zeno, was a poet as well as uh, a critic. Uh, there were people who sat in both kinds of get-togethers. The writers get-togethers and the artists get-togethers. And therefore, you find that there are lots of strands that are similar uh, in writing as well as in painting. I think today, we are also, we see um, definitely in the visual arts, I'm, I cannot, you know, I'm not an authority on writing, uh, but today you feel that there is a lot of energy in the visual arts in Pakistan. We must remember that we stand on the shoulders of other people who brought about the vision of Neador. Thank you. Simone, my question for you is like, you know, as a Western researcher, a historian, like, you know, um, your interest in Pakistani modern art, that's something that, you know, so I'm going to pose two questions. So that's number one question, like, you know, how did you come upon, like, you know, the modern art of Pakistan? And, um, you know, what was your take on modernism in Pakistan? Because one of the thing I ask you this question is that, you know, as researchers, one thing that we struggle is that, you know, this idea that modernism in all the periphery areas, like including anywhere like South Asia or like the other areas where it's been looked at as delayed or like, you know, um, um, sort of like copy. Um, how, how, what was your perception? So first, like, you know, your interest in Pakistani modernism, and then, you know, how do you look at the modern art of Pakistan? Um, interestingly, I came here to look in the late 1990s, this was, uh, to look at contemporary art. Um, and I realized that uh, contemporary art here was very much shaped by a dialogue with the modern, which eventually made me wanting to go back in time and understand the modern of this place. And, um, in the 1990s, being educated in uh, various parts in Europe, but not in England, I think this is something I need to emphasize, because the dialogue about so-called other modernist centers had just only begun. So I think, um, uh, perhaps not disadvantage to that, I think it also, uh, I feel I have been able to be part of this, to sort of look at modernism around the world and um, um, so I became interested in uh, the figure of Shakir Ali because um, I felt I need to uh, uh, look at the, the one, one of the figures who uh, started 
or was very much responsible for laying the foundation of modernism in Pakistan. And um, so I'm looking at, I have been looking at Shakir Ali as a transnational artist, his education at JJ School of Art, um, you've just heard, and his journey to England and his uh, journey to France onto the Czech Republic. And fortunately, living in Europe, I was able to uh, go into archive, uncover archives, uncover works of Shakir Ali even during the time that he stayed in Prague. He remained there for two years. Um, I literally uncovered works of this artist and uh, I uncovered um, designs that he did for the textile department at the university there. I found letters that he had written from England to this teacher in France. Um, I found photographs of Shakir Ali studying with uh, uh, rather prominent people of the light, late 1940s and early 1950s in France at the school of André Lot. So all of this sort of uh, added up to a quite interesting discussion on modernism and um, just to give an idea of how I'm treating this, I've also never looked at modernism from other places other than uh, uh, Western European or, or, or American as others. I always used the tool that I have as an art historian, uh, so focusing primarily on the formal uh, aspects of artworks. And I think this was also an advantage to look at artists like Shakir Ali from that perspective. And then I think it's not really what I have written about Shakir Ali didn't turn out to be something so other I mean, at least this is the feedback I get in Europe, and I think I'm actually quite happy with that so far. Mayor Saab, I wanted to ask you, like, you know, I'm sure you must be very young when you were designing um, Shakir Saab's house. And so your personal encounter with him in terms of, like, you know, being his architect, designing that space, like, you know, what kind of guidance would he give you or like his interventions in your design and how did you deal with it like you know yourself being an architect like you know how did you take that i hope you can see it uh, on the screen the house uh, if possible you can run it huh? keep on anyway it was a very interesting uh, experience this is shaka's house and the music uh, being played at the back is Rag Nilambri, which uh, Shakir Saab's favorite raga. And I had this uh, raga, and Shakir Saab used to come to my house specially to listen to this. It is sung by Omkar Nath Chakur. <coughs> and uh, his creativity was closely associated with his love for music. And he found uh, common ground in creative art of painting with music and also with literature. So he got his rhythm from the music and he got his intellect from literature and poetry. So that is a very rare mix that you don't find painters who are deeply in grounded, grounded into literature and command in understanding of the music. While designing this house, it's a very strange house. It's got a 5,000 square foot area and has a three-quarter bedroom, not even one complete bedroom. The rest of all the spaces are fluid. It's an exercise of design of space, not of rooms. And then there were sort of lessons to be learned by the architects for this. I had a position, it was a joint project where he was the senior architect and I was more of a draftsman. But we had an uh, interesting time uh, doing this. It took 10 to 12 years to build because he had no money. And periodically uh, he collected uh, money by selling a painting. 
and sadly when this was completed he could live for a very short time and passed away the lessons to be learned are lessons of handling of space one number two handling of an expression of unity when you look at architecture you go at the back you go on the side you find that the front is very good but the sides are weak and the back is a disaster in this it's a three dimensional exercise where it has the same strength everywhere and then look at the texture this brick was waste material to be thrown away and it was bought uh, very cheaply so the money was short and when it was built the neighbors came they said chakir sahab if you were short of money you should have asked us for help why did you get this crap material <laughs> so <clears throat> so now you can see the space for yourself as to how well it operates so his command as an artist on three dimensional was equally good Mr. Hashmi, I've been teaching for more than 40 years. I would say for more than 50 years. I just can't even like put exact numbers. One of the things that we realize in the history of Pakistani art is that you know we there's this great lacuna, like you know between like Shakir Ali and Zahur Ali Khan. So we start and we acknowledge yes. And and I must mention Zubeda Aga was the first one to have um, her modernist abstract painting exhibited in Karachi in 1949. So. um we can't just ignore that part but shakir ali became much more influential just because you know he had more of like voice in creating this lahore art circle and then being also associated with like national college of arts lahore so my question for you is like what do you think are the reasons like why have we undermined the modern art of pakistan for like you know all these decades let alone the fact the first decade has been completely ignored but what do you think is the you know do you think as a nation we just don't own or we don't see we don't understand or what are the reasons i think this is where um, state institutions have totally failed where do you go to see the work of this age um the modernists lived in lahore um many of them by the mid 50s had left and gone to europe and they came back but apart from a very small collection that is there in the permanent art gallery um in lahore which is um at kazafi stadium and in poor shape i have to say um where where do young people where do teachers who want to teach how do they refer to work which is simply absent from the public domain where are the museums where is the national art galleries outreach program why don't why don't we teach with the paintings so that people know what the works look like i mean we know how difficult it was to put together this small exhibition which is why we you know at the speed of lightning we put together this catalog uh, so that we have a permanent record of these paintings that we collected you know with great difficulty from private collectors who were very reluctant to let go of it to go to public space like at lahamra they were not sure will the pay works come back who look after them there's no insurance all the things that normally countries take for granted um, therefore to make this available to the public um, has been you know it's not been there um and therefore it's no surprise that in the mind of the public there is a blank when you say the lahore art circle when you say modernism in the visual arts i mean some people will say oh sadi can uh, most people will say chuftai knowing that he is not a modernist um so that whole um, decade is sort of absent now because there of course there's a museum dedicated to shakir ali you know thanks to people like nayar and kishor nahid and zahar sahab and so on that that building was bought by the state uh, but the works are not in good shape so we have a problem with history we have a problem with history 
not just in the visual arts. We have a problem with history generally as a nation. So no surprise that with the visual arts, it is also, there's an absence. And because there's an absence, it's filled with misconceptions. And I think that the fact that now we are talking about the modernists, we are finally giving them their due. We are finally connecting them to what is happening today. I think that this is a very important moment. I think that, you know, on both sides, I have two scholars who have been working on this era. And hopefully, this material will actually feed into the pedagogy of our fine arts departments in our universities, at NCA, VNU, wherever in this valley. So that becomes part of the way that we look at art today. People are far more familiar today with what, you know, Rashid Rana is doing or, you know, whoever. And quite unfamiliar with the work of, say, somebody as important as uh, Shakir Ali's, you know, companions, which are Sabtar, which are Moin Najmi, which are Ali Imam, and their various contributions to this early period. So it's very good that this discussion has started. And I think that finally, um, the absence will be noticed and then made up for. I would like to ask the last question for Simone, and then we would open the floor for questions so that you know we can have more of a you know interactive discussion. Simone, my question for you is like you know one thing we talk about as researchers, as historians, is this multiplicity of like modernism, like multiple modernism that existed all over the world, like you know not being on the same. That's a pretty much established fact now that they all were not on the same timeline, you know. Um, but there's also this phenomena of like multiple modernism in regions. So like, you know, for instance, in, in Indian subcontinent, we see these parallel movements that happen not like the West, but in a different way. So for example, in Pakistan, Chuhtai is modern in another way, and then Anna Molka stands as a modern artist in another way. How do you look at these multiplicities of like, you know, these, you know, parallel streams happening at the same time? And then, you know, Shakir Ali's work standing out in between all of them. What do you think is the factor that really kind of made him more modernist, if, I, if I'm allowed to say that, or than others? Or how is it that he's more acknowledged as a modernist artist than compared to other um, artists working at the same time? Well, as to modernism generally, um, and your uh, question, uh, several modernist um, movements or you said uh, multiple modernisms. Mm -hmm. um, I would also like to make a correction in our, or, you know, um, hint towards a correction in our mindset because even within Europe, there were so many modernist centers happening at the same time and have not been addressed yet. I mean, even within cities like Paris, the perception we have is that Paris, for the um, largest part, say for the first 50 years of the 20th century, was the center for. Um, cubism and that's all they did. There was so much more than that and there are so many artists and artist movements within Paris itself that have not had the necessary recognition so far. And all of this is happily changing but slowly. And then you move into eastern parts of Europe, art movements that have not been addressed by mainstream art historians yet and are only slowly being discussed. There is currently a really nice and very important, I find, exhibition at the Haus der Kunst in Munich um, called um, Post-War Art, 1945 to 1965. Very important exhibition. And for the first time, a mainstream exhibition of that kind showcases three Pakistani artists mingled in with everybody else. And you could find artists from all around the globe. And yet again, of course, that exhibition isn't complete either. There are lots of art movements and modernist centers that are not in that exhibition, including the Lahore Art Circle. I think that in itself is a jewel you have here. These guys really were a modernist movement in itself and need to be discussed much more. And what was the other thing? <laughs> so this is, I think you have addressed it pretty much indirectly. Like, you know, it's pretty much the tendencies that existed all over the world to have multiple sort of parallel movements running at the same time and so Pakistan also stands in one of them. So the last part was like how do you look at like you know Shakir Ali's work standing out among all of these 
Yeah, I think generally, if you look at the images that run behind us, I mean, these uh, artists from the Lahore Art Circle obviously didn't have an agenda where one was dictating uh, all of them. This is how we paint and this is how we go about. They were very open. They all came from similar backgrounds. Uh, a number of them were educated at JJ School of Art. Um, if not, then the education would have been quite similar. And the journey that Shakir Ali uh, headed to was something that um, few of them uh, actually undertook uh, shortly after he returned. So the exposure, I would say, was the same, but the outcome is very diffi different, right? There wasn't sort of a set of uh, a formal or a painterly agenda that they set out. And I think the reason why Shakir Ali um, stands out, and I think I need to be careful because I haven't engaged with the others so far, um, but he was the, the only one in 1952 when the group was formed who had a transnational, um, uh, who had transnational experience, is because he's probably brought back from his journey, uh, including South Asia, Europe, and back to South Asia, um, a possibility, a hope also that you know things can be done. Uh, and I think it was the encouragement that he brought back. You would know much more than I know. I'm only judging from uh, far distance. But I think this is more what Shakir Ali contributed to the Lahore Art Circle, a possibility, you know, that it's uh, literature, of course. I mean, he was heavily involved with uh, Rainer Maria Rilke. He was reading Fucic in Prague. Um, um, but other than that, uh, literature from this part of the world also um, so I think a lot of that also coincided with the interest of the other members of the Lahore Art Circle. I think they looked up to him a lot. Uh, the fact that, you know, they would often fight over formal aspects mm -hmm. um, of what they were doing. And they would often turn to Shakir because they felt, okay, he, he had a breadth of knowledge, mm -hmm. maybe, because of his experiences um, elsewhere, so that he could sometimes offer uh, something from that experience which could answer some of the questions that were arising uh, through practice or in the minds of these artists. i would be interested in knowing who are the three Pakistanis in this exhibition um, in uh, right now in, um, in Berlin. So in Berlin you have Shamsa, you have Rashid Rain, and you have Sadikin. Mm -hmm. in with, uh, you know, I and mean... Three these are three completely different yeah, yeah, it's amazing, really. Yeah. Um, yet again, you know, there should be others as well, but I think it's a brilliant beginning, and um, yeah, it'll travel. It's a so I think the diversity of the group is something that we can we can be proud of because it shows that they were not formulaic, mm -hmm. that each was pursuing his or her own path, and uh, yet they felt that something was drawing them together to the extent that they, they could call themselves Lahore Art Circle. And I often think, so what was it? I don't know. Was it Lahore? Mm -hmm. Is Lahore something that offers this forum mm -hmm. in which people who are engaged in an activity are willing to call it, you know, Lahore Art Circle? Mm -hmm. Do they identify with the city, the milieu of the city, mm -hmm. to the extent that even though they are so different, yeah. they still feel that this city gives them something. Yeah. I don't know, this is just a question. Yeah. Um, and I think today especially that question becomes more alive. Yeah. Yeah. I think locality, I'm sorry, no, I think locality matters largely yeah. when discussing uh, these artists, of course, I mean the locality of Lahore, but it also provides us with the opportunity to open up the region to the locality, as related to the locality. I think I just wanted to add that. I think it's uh, happening in time, around 60s was a period where modernism had crept into Pakistan, replacing orthodox craft and uh, traditional uh, artwork and life itself, literature, everything was being taken over by modernism and modernism which uh, at least I hate and a lot of others do now, but at that time modernism was a, a, a positive uh, uh, addition to values and uh, out of there 
we had these two remarkable institutions. One is the old one from 1875, the, the New School of Art, which turned into a contemporary masterpiece of education in 58 uh, by Professor Sponnenberg, who brought with him uh, a, a lot of uh, resource of wisdom uh, by various teachers coming from Canada, U.S., Britain, and even Japan, yeah. even Japan. So uh, uh, that interaction at that period and the intellectual un international values of that time were very rich and were translated into these groups and these people in Lahore. So Lahore uh, did contribute uh, at that time so well through the congregations of these people in the Arts Council and also in, in, in NCA. I think it's a matter of uh, uh, a, a timing in, in uh, place and time that pr brought this enrichment to Lahore, which uh, did not grow as well as it should have been. Yeah. Yeah, because one remembers these groups that used to come out of NCA, with some people coming out of the Fine Arts Department, Punjab University, across the road, and walking down the mall, and coming up eventually at Alhambra. And at Alhambra, what you had were these groups discussing, talking, fighting. But also that evening, there may be a concert by Roshnara Begum. There may be a concert by Amanat Ali Fateli. There may be a concert by Sharif Khan. So there was the possibility of the artist, the writer, the music maker, mm -hmm. to have a forum. And they were, you know, within a certain physical location, mm -hmm. as you said. Mm -hmm. So that enrichment that you're talking about was very, very tangible. Yeah. And it was part of uh, our notion, our growing up, mm -hmm. of the milieu, a particular milieu, which was extremely <coughs> fertile. Mm -hmm. And also the fact that the role of party house and coffee mm -hmm. house, like just a little before, you know, Hutt was formulated by Faz and Faz in 1961. I mean, the role of these two places where all of these artists, like, you know, they used to call like crazy people would get together and have these conversations in the evening. There's I mean, no such place now. There's no such <laughs> place now. <laughs> Maybe crazy people can get together. Well, I... Kochi <laughs> Takita, yes. he... I became a friend of his. He became addicted to Punjabi movies and will go every day. For people who don't know, this was the Japanese ceramicist Ceramis. who came to teach ceramics so at NCA. Then he came to me and he said, Nayar Saab, I like these films a lot. But you tell me why in every film, uh, in every film, fat lady is uh, jumping. <laughs> open the floor to questions and then also I wanted to say that unfortunately we just didn't have time to cover everything but please get your hands on these very limited uh, number of catalogs that we have outside because a lot of things have been covered in some of the essays which have been written in the book so you know, and you also have three authors who are willing to <laughs> sign Simone, myself and Samina. Oh it, it's by Sangimil publication so um, is it available on Sangamil as it's, well? Uh, that I don't know, but uh, Sangamil can tell you, but it's available outside and it will be available there online okay. also. So we're ready to take your question. <laughs> Excuse me, can you hear me? Achha, on behalf of management, we have an important an announcement. Uh, we will not have our sessions, uh, the last session in halls 1 and 3, 1 and 2, but we will have our session in 3 as, uh, which is as scheduled. Thank you. Uh, my question is to Ms. Hashmi in particular and the panel in general. Now, you said that the fact that uh, modernist art hasn't been highlighted is in part due to a failure of state institutions in Pakistan that would highlight art. Now, though I do not agree with them, there are people who say that a country like Pakistan can't afford to invest in the arts. And there are perhaps many libertarians in America who say they do not want to pay taxes to a state that would spend them on the National Arts Endowment. Now, um, how does one argue with these people or what does one say to them? I think that 
trying to separate cultural expression from the lives of people uh, shows a paucity of imagination. That cultural expression can be anything. The cultural expression can be music, it can be writing, it can be theater, it can be film. The fact that there has been a lack of, uh, not much priority given to cultural expression by state, by the state, through state policies, is very, very apparent. Um, you walk into even, um, say, countries in which have not had much money to spend on um, cultural acquisitions, there still will be, well, in many cases, enough so that people can recall their histories. If the development paradigm does not include cultural development, you will find that it's wanting. I can't really say much, but, you know, I come from a family which believed that cultural development is the vanguard of all development. It goes in the vanguard of all development. Unless you have a sense of yourself and who you are and where you came from, there's very little belief in the future. And therefore, I think that the fact that we did not acquire works, which, you know, as Nayer has pointed out, uh, people like Shakir had a great difficulty building his house because, you know, there were no sales of his work. And um, I once saw the first catalog of his exhibition, the first exhibition, which was in Karachi after he returned from, from um, Europe. And he sold two paintings in that whole show. Three, I think. Two were sold to, as he wrote in the catalogue, a lawyer called Bhutta. It was actually Zulfikar Ali Bhutto. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and one was, you know, signed, sold to somebody else. That of those two paintings, I did trace one to the Clifton residence many years after Shakir Sahib had passed away. Um, but this goes to show that um, the fact that the state did not acquire it means that we have lost you know, a large part of our visual history. Uh, and it continues to this day. The National Gallery in Islamabad uh, has not collected uh, since the 70s. So that tells you about, you know, the work that we have to do. So where the taxpayer's money goes, I don't want to presume on where it goes. We know where it goes. But certainly it has not been, mm -hmm. even a fraction of it has not been used to ensure that our visual history is firm. I just want to add a little bit to it, like, you know, so the exhibition that we curated last year in November, um, we showed 29 works. Out of those 29 works, we borrowed 20 works from private collections, and there were only nine that we borrowed from Lahore Arts Council because that's what they had. Um, and also the fact that, you know, Shakir is still like some, a figure that, you know, some people know and value and they have like, you know, museums have some works, but then, you know, the rest of the artists and Chamza is another one who's known um, a little more and then Ahmed Parvez, but Sheikh Saptar Ali, so for example, Sha Sheikh Saptar Ali's like 36 works were donated to um, Lahore Museum and they sit in their storage. So, I mean, even if it's there, which has been donated, like not even bought, they just sit in the storerooms and they just wait for somebody like us to go and photograph them and, you know, bring them to light. So, I mean, what we are trying to say here is like, you know, it's, it's just uh, multiple factors. Like one is, of course, government, but then also like, you know, we, we take responsibilities as citizens that, you know, we haven't even tried to explore um, in, in, the, in terms of research. We don't have an art history department anywhere in Pakistan. So correct me if I'm wrong. So, I mean, that just says a lot. Any other questions? Do we have any other questions? Yes, over there. So I want to know about the contribution of, of art from other parts of Pavlovich, Kachi, Kuretra, Vishavar, and the whole. So, the, so your question is that Pakistan, art from other parts of Pakistan? Yes, yes, yes. Um, well, definitely. I mean, at the time of partition, we only had two, I should just back off and say one center of art, then we inherited Mio School of Art. 
Then we had simultaneously, gradually we, we developed art centers, which was Karachi and then Dhaka later. But then, you know, our specific focus was only on Lahore, Lahore Art Circle. And, and there's no doubt about like, you know, these three centers were like really major places where art really flourished. So that's why we haven't like looked at it, but you're right, there are definitely other places in Pakistan where art has been produced and yet to be discovered. And I think it's important to, to look at the fact that what was uh, the eastern wing of the country for a, for a period of time was very, very um, influential. Uh, my question is to Simone Ville. I'd like to ask Simone what she is doing now, the research that she's carrying out at the moment and what she's engaged with. Yeah, so after um, the book, I have been um, discovering more of what I've mentioned earlier of not only Shakir Ali, but of other South Asian artists who came to places like, it's really at the at grassroots level, but um, I have been able to receive generous funding from the Austrian government for this project. Um, so I'm be here more, coming to this region continuously. And of course, I actually enjoy going to the museum also, Shakir Ali Museum. I, even there tap into things that I hadn't seen and documents and I think it's really important to have these resources also here. And every time I come I go to the Lahore Museum and I find even there, you know, a painting I hadn't looked at earlier, perhaps it wasn't hanging there. So yes, of course institutions matter and uh, happy to be engaged with this. I feel very privileged to be able to work as an art historian and I wish there would be more art historians from this part of the world, particularly. And I think there is a lot to do and perhaps there can be future art historians. Any questions? Mayor sir, you said that you aren't particularly fond of modernism. So would you describe yourself as postmodernist or no, no, I'm not, I'm not talking in the context of art. I was just talking of life in general, the modern times, the disaster of <laughs> the new landscape of these barriers and barbed wires and backsides of the air conditioners and what we see today, the landscape in, in, is all a fruit of modernism. I think in a year, I think that you should do some research on uh, the landscape of the backside. <laughs> <laughs> Other question from the audience? Well, thank you so much to all of you for coming um, and making this session happen. And um, I hope that you will start noticing modern art around you, um, the ones that we have tried to highlight. And um, please um, make sure that you get a catalog. Um, thank you so much. The three authors are there to sign, in just in <laughs> case. <laughs> <laughs>